Good, Good morning, everybody. This is Brad Drew. I'm with Eagle Homes, powered by EXP, and this is the Eagles Nest Podcast, and I'm here as always with Vince Duvall, powered by EXP. Awesome. So, so this week... Oh, my collar looks like shit. Got a couple things. Uh, Vince is going to fix his collar while we're going to talk about what we're going to do this week. Pop the collar. Pop the collar. All right. Kidding. All collars are popped. We're ready to wrap. So we're going to get into some uh, fun local events or event that was going on this weekend. Um, I think we personally just had some things going on as well. But first, we're going to talk about equity. Equity in your home, why it's important, what you can do with it. And uh, probably come up with some other things from there in regards to equity. So to, today's talk is equity. So first and foremost, Vince, what is equity? It is, how do I break this down? It is what your house could be worth versus what you owe on it. The difference between the two is the equity you have in your home. So equity, that's a fancy word in real estate for basically if it was a business, it would be your profits. I like that. Right? <laughs> Pretty right. much, kind I mean, of. I mean, it really is. I mean, yeah. That's, uh, I mean, you, there's other expenses, of course. Then if you go to sell your home, you have a title, policy, insurance, closing costs, transfer tax fee, because the government has to get their share. Uh, real estate commissions, all that kind of good stuff. And then, of course, minus whatever you owe in your home, there's your uh, there's your equity or what would your what they call it, the closing table, your proceeds. Yep. So, yeah, obviously, equity is important if you go to sell your home. That gives you buying power on your next home. If you are maybe entering retirement and, you know, I know I've had grandparents that have owned homes, gone into retirement communities and things like that. Right. So they basically go back into the renting world. It's quite an expensive <laughs> rent. <laughs> Assisted living and um, retirement facilities. But yeah, essentially part of their nest egg is the equity in their home. You know, uh, my, my grandparents have all been fortunate to you know, walk away with a good amount of equity for, for the ones that have done that. Yeah. So um, otherwise... Obviously, the normal thing would be to take maybe not all, but at least a portion of that put down on your next house, keep your mortgage payment low, especially with interest rates up. Yeah. So, so that's what you're doing yourself. What, how can equity, let's talk a little about how equity can help you if you're not planning on selling that while you're currently in the home. So I'll, I'll kick off the first one, which is home improvements. Yep. This is, these, by the way, I said first one. These are in no particular order of importance. Okay. Not at all. Everybody's different. So one of the things you can do is if you're looking to like update a kitchen, your kitchen was last updated 20 years ago, whatever, it's maybe getting a little beat up. Whatever reason you want to do a total kitchen remodel. Depending on the size of the kitchen, of course, I think if we redid our kitchen, it would probably run about, it'd probably be a twenty dollars to $25,000 kitchen based on the size and everything and kind of what I think we would do. Okay. So, okay, maybe I have $50,000 cash or $30,000 cash sitting in my savings account or whatever to do that project. But another option to me is to take the equity of my home, maybe do a cash out refinance, although might not want to do that with the way the interest rates are right now, right. especially if my interest rate is on my, my first mortgage is less. But there are HELOCs, Home Equity Lines of Credit. For those don't know what that term stands for. And maybe I just borrow out of the equity of my home to pay for that kitchen remodel because what is that kitchen remodel going to do? It's going to, of course, enhance the value of your home. Right, right. So you're just using your equity to maintain or update and create potentially more equity in your home. Correct. So that's one thing you do is, is a home improvement. Now, the HELOC loan, uh, I, there's a lot of value in HELOC loans, especially with the uh, interest rates where they're at today. Yeah. Uh, most HELOC loans, this is where people have to, you know, ca throw caution into the wind, right? HELOC loans typically are in trust only loans. So if you're borrowing yeah. 30000 and you're paying back $700 a month, whatever that looks like, keep in mind that is just interest. That there is no principal. That dollar, that $30,000 is not going down by any means. So yeah. you have to go above and beyond to pay that down. Yeah. Let's talk about all the different functionalities of how a home equity line of credit works. So when a bank gives you a home equity line of credit, like Ben said, you pay, a lot of times you're paying interest only, some some not, but a lot, a lot, yes. You can then, of course, you have it for, it's good for a period of time. So let's say you borrowed 30 grand yep. on, a, on an ELOC. 
what you then get, you actually get a checkbook in a lot of cases. So you can literally like write money out there like it's a checking account. You're only paying the interest on how much you're using. So even if I have a $30,000 line of credit, but I only use 20,000 of it, I'm paying back the 20,000 and then of course, plus the interest. Right. Ideally then if you have an interest only for whatever you whatever you've used, you're gonna wanna pay additional to start paying that down. Right. And you can pay it down anytime, any lump sum. And even if I borrow 20,000, didn't get your remodel three months later, you know, from for what would be me as some big commission or something like that, I'm like, okay, we'll just pay this off. Yeah. Okay. Why would you use a HELOC for something like that versus credit cards? Um, well, the HELOC interest rates are typically going to be better than your credit cards. Okay. Now, credit cards are another great option, potentially, because I know a lot of credit cards can give you, um, we just did it to buy us our stove, is we put a, 0% interest for 18 months to buy the stove because, well, we got a lot of other expenses right now. So I'm like, well, it's interest free. Why take that 700 bucks right. in cash? Similar concept to the HELOC, but you could potentially do it on a credit card if you've got the 0% interest. Yeah. Or I've never seen this, but maybe you have. You know, usually it's either 0% interest for a time frame on your credit cards or it's it's regular 15, 18. <laughs> 25%, whatever the whatever, ridiculous, whatever it is. If you're paying interest on it and you're not getting the 0% interest on credit card, the, the, the interest rate on a HELOC is going to be way less. Yeah, true. So. True. And just keep in mind for those that have not played with a 0% interest credit card, where you buy something, you get it for 12 to 18 months, 0% interest, it you have to pay it off during that time frame. So you have to pay it off in that 12 to 18 months. Otherwise, you get charged. That interest, that interest is accruing in the back. In the background. Yes. In the background. That's, so that's a good point. You hit 19 months and you just accrued another thousand dollars in interest on a thousand dollar pro you know item. You uh just shot yourself in the foot because you didn't you didn't pay it down. You're like, oh, I'll do it next month. I'll do it next month. Yeah. Set a budget for it, guys. Figure out how much you can afford every month and, and pay that off so that you're getting it paid off within that time frame. Exactly. So so those are key things there. So um so HELOCs are a great option when potentially using things for uh, for uh, repairs and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, you know, unless with HELOCs, right, mm -hmm. repairs, you know, the other thing you see people do is, you know, one-time lump expenses such as, sure. um, you know, a car mm -hmm. or college fund, whatever it might be. Your kid's going off to college, they, you know, you got to get them all started off first, first months or first semesters, uh, tuition, whatever it might be. So you see people take a HELOC up to pay it off and then they'll pay it over, pay it off over the next three to six months and then pay, take it out again. So it's kind of like a revolving line of credit for them. Actually, my parents did that for me in college way back when, it feels like a hundred years ago, because I'm old, yep. um, to, buy, to buy my car as I was in college. So they, they had a HELOC at a better interest rate than a car loan would have been. Right. So they're like, we'll just use this. And um, I paid payments in the summertime. My parents were always nice to me. I was blessed in this case. Spoiled they, didn't, they didn't want me working during the school year. They want me to focus on, well, high school was focused on sports and sports and, of course, education. And when college, focus on the education during the school year. So, but when I worked in the summertime, I made the payment and they made the payment in the wintertime. And uh, we paid off faster and paid a lot less interest. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think car loans at the time, now might still be the same or I think the car loan interest was going to be like 12 or 13 percent De depending on and yeah the, what, he, what you're doing the heel at the time was I think I don't even know probably half of that yeah yeah so, so that's yeah. another thing one long big big major one-time purchases yeah yeah um so what's what, what's another one potentially you can think of this well, is not a, such a positive one I had in mind uh I was thinking uh <laughs> I was thinking, potentially how oh, wait wait depending on how you feel about it Oh, uh, you know where I'm going. I was going to go medical bills and death and death and death to start with. Uh, okay, is where I was going. That's also not positive. <laughs> Can't see where Brad's going next. Then, uh, so medical bills and then death. Like someone passes away, and there's no, you know, there's no life insurance set up, no funeral plan set up. Someone's got to pay for that, and yeah, you know, unless you really dislike the person, where I think Brad was going with that, um, you could end up. Uh, I, I think I know where he's going. Uh, you could end up using your HELOC to help pay for those types of things also. Yeah. All right, Brad, what's yours? Come on. Divorce. Okay, elaborate. Yeah. Well, a lot of times, 
this usually ends up in a refi, but I, I think there could be instances where any in some type of using use of your home's equity. So it doesn't yeah. have to be a HELOC, but a lot of times when divorce and let's say one of the couples of couple of the former couple is going to stay in the home, but they've got to buy the other one out. Yeah. A lot of times they what they're splitting is the equity. Right. So a, a simple example, you have a four hundred thousand dollar house, you have two hundred thousand dollar mortgage, there's two hundred thousand dollar equity, they split that. The one staying will take out, you know, usually they have to do a refi to get the other person off the loan, but they have to basically essentially maybe borrow that extra three hundred thousand or whatever it is to, right. to buy the other person out. Right. So I mean there's that, that's there's a lot to there, but that's another use of equity. Correct. So <laughs> Do you think of anything else you could use your equity for? Well, let you know the importance of understanding the equity of your of your house. A lot of loans today have what's called PMI on them, mm-hmm. and let's say you know, depending on the loan, you may be paying PMI, and some loans are structured to where you pay it to the end of the loan. It does not matter um, where you're at, what you're doing. Once you and that mortgage insurance is based off how much you put down when you purchase the house. So if you only put down three percent your mortgage insurance is going to be greater than someone that put down, say, 15% on the same house, okay? So keeping that in mind, your mortgage insurance may be set up to go for 10, 15, 30 years, all the pain. Well, because the market is growing so quickly over the last three to four years, people have a lot more equity than they did when they bought their house. So potentially a refinance today you know, maybe at a little bit higher interest rate could get you could get your PMI off your mortgage. Absolutely. And of course, and for those that you know, never bought a home, never heard of PMI, whatever, PMI exists when you put less than 20% down on your home, which yeah. a lot of people do, uh, especially first time home buyers, um, specifically because you know they haven't created equity from a previous home. So, so yes, so uh, getting that PMI off is, is another use of equity. Uh, I'm going to give another one. It's not going to be used probably like it was when interest rates were. Five percent and under, yep. um, and depending on how the, probably like the stock market and the investment markets are doing. But I knew I knew several people. I wish I would have um, been wise or been in a position to do this when uh, the interest rates were there. Was I knew people didn't owe anything on their mortgage or on their home. They would take out a hundred thousand dollar mortgage at three and a half four percent, turn it over to their investor, and their investor was getting them. 10, 11, 12, 13% return. Yeah. So essentially that mortgage, you were making more in dividends and interest than you were paying. Right. Um, so you can use your home equity as a form of making money. Too. Reinvesting, yeah. It is an investment. Yep. I mean, you can make a lot of arguments too that, you know, and I, this might be another use of equity is, so if you, if you put down 20%, let's say, on a, even a twenty thousand dollar home or two hundred thousand dollar home, excuse me. Thank what, you. What, Thank if the mar- what if the market drops three percent, which could happen in, in the yeah. next three to four years, right? Could. Okay. Will it? Probably not. Or if it does, it's going to be it's going to be three around three yeah. percent. That's that's norm unless something majorly happens to the real estate market. Again, I've, we've said this before and other things we've talked about, like recession and stuff. Yeah. Recessions have historically had very minimal impact on appreciation real estate. Um, five, five of the last six uh, recessions, the market's either gone actually up slightly or the worst it got went down was 3% outside of the real estate driven recession, which was the 2008, which, yeah, right. But that was real estate driven. So that was, that's like a once in a century type of thing. Hopefully once in a two century thing. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so that's there's that's another form of again using equity is even if the market does dip, and this is why we hear us say, like, well, when you're renting, you're paying 100 percent interest. Yeah. Because at least if you're paying down your mortgage, you are adding to your equity. So even if the home drops slightly, you still should have equity there. Right. And again, this is for normal dips. Yeah. So you know, if, if you're recent, again, you can come into some play because there's closing costs. You know, you got to be careful. If you, if you if you buy market dips within the first five years, eh. It's going to be a risk. You could take a slight, slight loss 
slight loss versus you know, not so slight loss. Right. That's where you got to weigh out, you know, if you're if you're tight on the equity. Yeah. But if you've got a lot of equity, there's just, I mean, there's a lot of uses, probably stuff that we're not even thinking about this morning unless you have something else so amazing. No, no. To, you know, and say. kind of want to touch on a couple of things, right? Like we, we talked about buying and, you know, you used the phrase just a few minutes ago, you're paying, a, if you're renting, you're paying a hundred percent interest. Mm -hmm. uh, and so people, I remember a year ago, people freaking out because interest rates were driving the, you know, five, sixes, low sevens a, a year ago. Uh, today we're at, I think I looked it up just a minute ago, 7.66. Yeah, um, if I remember, that's, yeah, yeah, some over the weekend, so some points, yeah, 7.66, six, um, which it is not all that bad. Um, no, I can't get my screen back up. There we go. Uh, but I remember the, the other, our other famous quote that we see all the time is you are marrying the house, dating the rate. Mm -hmm. For I just had one of my buyers, their one year anniversary was this past weekend from when they closed, and she she actually commented on that she was glad she bought when she did, uh, only because interest rates continue to go up, and yeah. and she got the house that she wanted, which, you know, two great things. But people, and then I had someone else on Friday go, oh, I don't know why anybody would want to sell today. Well, let's you know, let's touch on why people would want to sell today. To you know, why are they using that equity? What are they doing? Um, and there's, oh my goodness, there, there's numerous reasons why people are buying or selling today. Right. I mean, again, we're not going to probably think of every reason because there's little one-offs right. that are specific to individuals, but common ones are if you have a growing family. Yeah, right. Upsizing. You need upsize. You know, we, we referenced retirees earlier. Typically, they, that once the family's gone and they're done hosting, you know, at some point, we're, we're actually just, and we just entered that several years ago where instead of going to, you know, our parents or her, my wife's parents, we were hosting the holidays. Yeah. So because then, then that allowed our families to downsize. It's not always the case. I mean, I know my my grandmother hosted the holiday dinners like well into her 80s, I think. <laughs> but, but I mean, it usually gets there's that shift there, right? Yeah. So, you know, our seniors typically then will want to downside because it's a lot to take care of. You know, yeah. A bigger, the bigger house, the more there is to take care of. Lawn, cleaning, maintenance, updates, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Right? So, you know, we're seeing individuals downsizing because they're going into retirement communities or they, they don't want that responsibility of lawn care, maintenance, things like that. So they're looking at selling to go into condos. Do, and it doesn't even have to be our seniors. I know, and I know you do too. People have bought homes that they think they want the home, but then maybe they travel up for work, whatever. Yeah. And they're they're single, or maybe there's their their spouse or significant other also travels work, or do you just like to travel more? All right, I don't want this lawn care. I don't want to be around for that. I don't want to pay for that. I'm not here that much. So they're like, oh, maybe I get a condo instead. Yep. Yeah. You yeah. Know, something like that. And, and I think con condos are one of the, you know, the breeds that we need to see more builds of. Yeah. I, I think they're, especially for the young professional, I think young professionals nowadays are working more. They're, you know, they're, you know, put in 50 to 60 hours of work a, a week uh, because they, they like the money, they like the spend, but they don't like the responsibility of taking care of a house. Yep. So they want, they want a place they can call their own that they understand growing equity, the value in that, and they need a condo. Attention builders in this portion. There are so many, Burlington in general does not, the Burlington area doesn't, to, in my opinion, does not have a lot of condos. No. The unfortunate, this is unfortunate for consumers. And it's not necessarily an unfortunate thing just in general, but all the condos are being built are like starting at 400,000. Yeah. Yeah. Someone develop, a, and I know it can be done. It's it's difficult. I I worked on a project that didn't work out with a developer that was trying to do something like this um, a few years ago. It just didn't work at the time, but I think it's it's still worked. This developer has done it in other states, and I know it can work, in Wisconsin. Try and get some, just un, even under three hundred thousand, like under two fifty would be amazing. Oh, geez, yeah. Those would be great things for like young professionals, first time home buyers, things like that. Elders that are downsizing. Yeah. And then duplex is another thing that have kind of gotten because of their popularity and there's just only so many of them. Duplex pricing is just 
gone through the roof as well. Yeah. Yep. I mean, yeah. So you could have bought something early this year and potentially sell your duplex right now and turn a profit. Yeah. Uh, let alone if you bought it, say, I don't know, three years ago, two or three years ago. <laughs> it's it's pretty disgusting. But yeah, it's 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 so, it's positive and there's some negatives to it too. I mean, those were things that and we've talked about it in our like first time home buyers, like what are some good moves? Duplexes used to be it, just it's hard to find them right at a reasonable right. price. There's one in Burlington right now for around 250, but I know it's I know it's probably some more yeah. whatever. So anyway. Uh death and divorce, right? Death and divorce, another reason people are selling today. Yep. Uh kind of once again, their hands being forced to 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 sell. Um, uh, relocation. People are relocating for work. Um, you know, the the one of the trainers at Burn Boot Camp is they're moving to St. Louis here in a couple of weeks. And you know, they're probably gonna have to sell their house or rent it out, whatever it might be. But, you know, so relocation for for jobs or family, being closer to family. Did you get that listing? No, not yet. Okay. Illinois. Oh, nice. Uh, in case you heard me, Christina. Uh, um, <laughs> so that's awesome. Yeah. So, you know, there, there's reason people are selling and buying today. You know, they don't want to run anymore. They're just graduating college. They're moving to the area for a job, whatever it might be. The market still is, you know, there's still people out there that need to buy or sell. And our job is to help them navigate that, that system and, and how to, how to make it as smooth and painless as possible. Because let's be honest, it is not an easy deal right now. The sellers are still greedy. Buyers are greedy. Uh, both parties want to feel like they're getting a deal. We help have to, we have to help manage that that happy medium. So yeah, uh, it, it's an interesting market right now. Um, some houses are going with multiple offers over ask. I haven't seen anything go for crazy over ask. Like no. what we saw, you know, when interest rates were still awesome, and it was like that crazy or whatever it was. 20, 2021 was probably the last full year, right before the interest rates went up there. Like stuff was just going for 40, 50. I mean, I heard I heard some hundred thousand dollars over asking. I mean, I think the personally witness looked at other other sales it wasn't that we weren't involved with. I think I've seen maybe 20,000. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I've seen much more than that. And I don't know if I've seen too many of those. But I, I had 34,000 last year. Yeah, 34,000 okay, 34, last, last year. Yeah. That's probably in the last two years one of the bigger ones I yeah. have. Witness. I'm sure they're out there just you know visually what I've seen, but I just know that it would seem like every house there, you know, was going over two years ago was like over asked and like a ridiculous number over yep. asked that, yeah. that I was cautioning buyers, quite frankly. Like, I don't know if I'd do that. Yeah. Because of that whole conversation of you don't stay here five years. In some cases, I thought you better stay here 10 years with how much they were talking about paying over. I'm like you know, I mean, that's our job, right? To just advise the cautionary, and I was like, you know, I I wouldn't advise it. Most of my clients, thankfully, did not. They just either didn't get it or waited for the home that wasn't crazy over, or if they did, at least they knew the risk. Right, right, so. it, right. No, and that's we're not seeing the crazy over ask price right now. You know, and and, and kind of to touch on that. Let, let's where do we think the next two years is going? Are we going to have a low supply? where everything's going to continue to go right at ask price are we going to and interest rates stay where we're at are we going to have supplies going to increase interest rates are going to drop and buyers are going to come out of the woodwork and we're going to start overpaying for houses again right uh, it's all it's all going to be based on supply i truly believe it's a lot of it has to do with supply supply then interest rates probably then interest rates i agree supply and demand is always the key the key I I don't foresee. So I can see supply getting a little better. Minimal, but yeah, so a little. But a little, great. but not a lot. So right. I see it still maintaining the seller's market overall. I see it being better for buyers, so that they're either there is enough inventory where they there are some multiple offers. Again, not crazy numbers. I think that stuff's going to continue. As far as interest rates. And I haven't really looked at, I usually pay attention to these different um, resources that we have as agents that 
they're they're the experts. They're the ones that like they, they study this stuff, and they're usually fairly accurate with mortgage trends and stuff like yeah. that. They're still saying going back down after the first of the year at some point. I haven't heard like a oh January or June next year, summer, whatever. But they're going to go back down. I think what I keep hearing is we're going to level off at some point. We're going to kind of stay in that maybe four and a half. But I think we're going to stay somewhere between that five and six and a half percent at some point and kind of maintain that for I don't know, years to come. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm hearing from, yeah. the, from people who are way smarter than me. <laughs> so this weekend, Brad, you got an opportunity to attend a fun event. I did. We're going to put some I got a couple of fun photos out there that I took um, or just photos. I was goofy with a little couple selfies in front of our logo. Awesome. So uh, our uh, Team Eagle Home sponsored the Burlington Brawl, the first annual Burlington Brawl. The inaugural. The inaugural. Um, set up and a uh, great job organizing, planning, setting up from Taylor Wishaw. He's one of our school, uh, Burlington School District board members. Uh, Taylor did a phenomenal job. It was kind of like, it wasn't like WWE. It was like the, like every sport, the minor league yeah. of some type. Um, but but think WWE. So think it's WWE Burlington type. Brawl. Yeah. It's not yeah. MMA fighting. It no, was it's, like WWE. It was like WWE style wrestling, which yeah. I haven't been to one of those types of wrestling events since WWE was WWF when I was a kid. Yeah. Yep. And I was never into it, but I had a buddy that was. So I went with him and his dad one time. And um, it's definitely, under, it was super entertaining, first of all. So it was a fun event. All pros, the proceeds went to, was to raise money for Veterans Outreach of Wisconsin, which is one of, you know, veteran, veteran, veterans in general. heroes, yep. some events and ISIS, um, charities that we that we try to, you know, get push money, for, yeah. push, push and get money raised either through us or through other people. So, so uh, I, I got a kick out of, and this is going to sound like a critique, but it's really not. So obviously, that type of wrestling is is entertainment first mm -hmm. and some of the contact they take is legit real and it probably hurts so i give them kudos that some of it is not yeah <laughs> you catch a couple supposed punches that didn't strike but the the reaction there so i thought that was a little funny yeah um i as someone who does has never been in the wwe or wf even as a little kid it was really fun and entertaining just to watch this, this this stuff. I got the best kick out of the little kids were loving it. Yeah. Oh yeah. We had a, we were sat next. We were at a table because we did the sponsorship, so we got a table and everything. And um, we sat next to I don't know which business it sponsored, but it was the guy brought basically a bunch of kids. Probably the oldest might have been twelve. The youngest was probably eight. Okay. They were just into it the whole time i was i spent more time watching them react to the stuff yeah um it was super fun super entertaining uh they kept saying as the first inaugural so i think taylor's gonna do it again there's they were expecting 600 people in attendance which is pretty good for that yeah. event. it was at the it was at the Carter middle school gymnasium and uh, it looked like there's well, and he posted people. There. He, he posted. He said 650 people attended. Okay. is what he posted. Yeah. So you know, I don't know if that's you know assuming every seat was filled at like the reserve tables or the sponsorship tables, or if it was people that came through the door. But either way, it was you know 650 people. A uh, great turnout for Wisconsin for veterans outreach. Uh, and I, what I'd like to know, and you know, maybe Taylor will share it down the road because I think there's something to be said about it. Uh, how much money was raised yeah. for veterans outreach? Yeah. Uh, because that's always it's always fun to you know when you do an event like that to find out it, that event raid raised ten thousand dollars or five thousand dollars, whatever it might yeah. have been. You know, some money's better than no money, right? It, exactly. It was so it did definitely did what it's supposed to. I'd love to hear what they raised. That's because that's that was the main reason. It was a super cool event. It was fun for the kids. Um, and I'll, I'll give a shout out to, they really set you up. Like, so I'm going to, this is for other businesses that sponsor. Um, I think it was $500 or more. I can't remember how many corporate tables there were. And there was 10 seats per table. You got a table. Yep. Um, you got a appetizer dish and cookies that were actually from the that cookie was, corner. That, from the cookie corner. That's my wife's business's donation. And then Napoli's 
um, for the tables. All those tables got pizza, not pizza. If you don't know what pizza is, just check on Napoli's. Um, so you got a, a tray of pizza. What's pizza? Pizza is their. I'm going to butcher this. So Vincenzo, you see this? Sorry, you can you can comment and correct me. Please do. Pizza is essentially it's not. They can't advertise as totally gluten free, but it's basically a gluten free crust. Okay. So I know there's gluten free pizza crust, but pizza is a different technology. It's a different thing. It's it's very much like pizza, but there's some differences to it. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Um, so it's a different crust that yeah. kind of makes it a little more gluten tolerable. Yeah. And, um, Vincenzo and Carlo Padone, her brother, um, they're like, this is a business that I don't know how the ownership, but that's going way beyond what we need to. Yeah. Uh, pizza is something different. So it was supplied by Naples, which is pretty awesome. And then you had for the concession stand, you didn't have to go to the concession. You had servers. Really? Yeah, it was some of the junior high kids that were volunteering for the event. And they were, they're like, they would come over, like, well, we're going to be your server for you. So you need anything from the concession stand, just let us know. And then they go get it for you. You just pay them. And uh, Very cool. So, like, the business is a fun event, entertaining, great cause. So, assuming they go to the second annual and keep this going. Um, they're going to be bigger space. They, they might need a bigger space, which was cool. My wife did say one thing. And I think it was great. It was at the junior high is awesome. My wife is like, let's face it. Those types of events are definitely for the adults. Probably more, a little more entertaining than without alcohol though. <laughs> so, so maybe a venue that serves some cocktails next year. <laughs> I, I was wondering that. Like, was there bottles of wine in no. the table? Uh, uh, I guess uh, we're in a public school. So it makes a public lot of school, so no alcohol is served. But uh, me, that would be the only thing on the venue. But kudos to Karcher and its staff because the some of the teacher staff the, at the from the school and the students were working the event okay and also shout out to them did an amazing job nice nice so, so yeah great great event this past weekend that Brad got to attend that we sponsored so uh kudos to Taylor and everybody he had involved in getting that set up so thank you very much the Karcher Middle School and, you know, all the sponsors that help make it happen. And there's a lot of different ways. And we'll make sure when we uh, get our podcast, this podcast uh, week posted to our YouTube channel, uh, we'll put a link to Veterans Outreach. So, uh, May, please do that. I'm going to make a note um, of that. There's a lot of different ways you can participate. You can do food donations, monetary donations, um, I believe certain types of supplies. Check out the website. You can contact them if you have questions. Just say, hey, how can I get involved? They have a, it's a temporary, the facility over in Racine is a, it's basically, it's a temporary living quarter. They have these little, like, little tiny homes for the veterans. Yep. Helps them get back on their feet or transitioning in different ways for, you know, for different reasons in life and stuff like that for our veterans amazing cause check it out try and get it like i said there's a lot of different ways you can get involved just going and volunteering and spending time over there with some of the veterans and hanging out playing games or whatever there's a lot of different ways to do it please check out their website taylor will answer any questions so if you want to get a hold of him uh it's taylor wishaw w-i-s-h-a-u is his last name uh Track him down on Facebook, and he's one of our school board members as well. Yeah. So I'll add that link to the to the YouTube along with our uh, home equity link, where you can actually go in, put your address, and kind of get a play with your home equity on your property. So I'll add that as well. That's uh, our uh, that's our address. Thing. Yeah, that's our address. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yep. yeah, yeah. I'll add that to the thing too. So I'm Vince Ball with Eagle Homes, powered by Exp Realty. I'm Brad Brewer. We'll see you next week with another fun topic, and we'll see you later. Have a great week, everyone. Bye.